Okay, welcome to another tutorial. Uh, we are going to focus on our third major classification of macromolecules in this tutorial known as lipids. Lipids are classified as molecules that are hydrophobic. And of course, um, as the word implies in hydrophobic, is hydro meaning water and phobic meaning do not does not like or does not love so we're talking about molecules that do not like or love water at all they want to stay as far away from them as possible so and essentially we can say that lipids are non polar molecules or non polar macromolecules there are three major lipids that you will become familiar with in this tutorial and need to know and understand quite well. And they are uh, fats, phospholipids, and steroids. Now, fats, another word or another name for fat is a triglyceride. And we'll talk about why they're referred to as triglycerides a little bit later in this tutorial. Okay, so just like we've had to understand the functions of proteins and carbohydrates, we also need to understand the functions of fats and lipids in our in our bodies, okay? So, first of all, uh, they lipids spe specifically fats um, store energy, lots of energy. Um, they release more energy than carbohydrates do. Um, in fact, is they undergo um, more oxida oxidation. And I have here kind of uh, some facts here. Is one gram of fat releases twice the amount of energy as one gram of carbohydrates. So fats store a lot of energy. And uh, that energy storage is um, produces or, uh, twice the amount of energy than carbohydrates does. Um, where do we store um, energy? Well, we store this um, energy in the form of fat and in the adipose tissues, okay, which you need to be familiar with. So again, energy, it, um, fats store energy in adipose tissue and they produce twice the amount of energy um, than carbohydrates. Okay, lipids are also important in cell membranes. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about cell membranes a little bit later, but cell membranes is the barrier that surrounds, that separates the inside of cells from the outside of cells. And this barrier um, protects the inside of the cell from uh, materials that should not be going, compounds or other things that should not be going into the cells, as well as it keeps things inside the cell from leaving. And so this barrier is, is primarily composed of lipids, specifically known as phospholipids, which we will discuss phospholipids and their structure later on in this tutorial. Um, the functions of lipids, they act as um, kind of a, like a, we call it a thermal blanket. They keep our tissues and organs warm um, at correct temperatures, um, and they also cushion them. Um, they're kind of a uh, shock absorbance type deal. And then uh, they're also used as precursors for hormones. So we, uh, some of these lipids... Um, specifically the molecule uh, cholesterol, and cholesterol is a, a lipid. We'll talk more about cholesterol also later on in this tutorial. But uh, cholesterol is a precursor for many hormones, um, such as um, steroids and prostaglands. And then we have finally our last function of lipids is that they will absorb, help absorb, absorb 
uh, fat-soluble vitamins such as vitamin A, D, E, and K. And we'll talk more about fat-soluble um, vitamins uh, later here when we get into um, nutritional um, biochemistry. So uh, just remember uh, that fats, or we should say lipids in general, have many functions in the human body. Uh, you need to know and understand all of these functions um, and be able to list them on the IB exam, just like knowing and listing the functions of carbohydrates and proteins. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to skip the negative effects of uh, lipids right now. So we're going to scroll down, and we are actually going to start talking about structures of lipids first, and then we'll come back and discuss the negative effects of lipids in our body. So the first um, lipid we're going to look at are triglycerides, which are known as fats. And triglycerides, or fats, are composed of uh, two major types of monomers. One is called glycerol, which we'll look at the structure of glycerol in a minute, and then fatty acids. What you're looking at on this screen is an example of two fatty acids. Um, the way we know that they're fatty acids is because they have a functional group. Oops, let me erase that. A functional group that is a carboxylic acid right here. And that carboxylic acid will be important in just a moment. Um, we're basically going to uh, link um, carboxylic acid groups on these fatty acid chains with a glycerol molecule. Now, the fatty acid itself um, is going to contain a very, very long chain of hydrocarbons and this long chain of hydrocarbons is going to give the fatty acid a non polar look to it so essentially even though um, the fatty acid has a carboxylic acid group which this is really a polar group the majority of a fatty acid is nonpolar and that will be that's important to understand now um, fatty acids come in really two varieties um, notice at the bottom we have some fatty acids that have some double bonds in them okay now this is important because we have two types of fatty acids uh, the ones with double bonds in them are called unsaturated unsaturated fatty acids okay and the one above that um, is an uh, is a saturated fatty acid problems here so let me write it over here a saturated okay. so that is a saturated fatty acid um, the one below us here the reason why it is saturated is because it has no double bonds in it and the carbons in our long car hydrocarbon chain here um, has hydrogens that are completely surrounding all of the carbons. Whereas in the unsaturated fatty acid, the double bonds here, they don't have hydrogens on there that are completely saturated around it. All right, But all saturated fatty acids and unsaturated fatty acids have a um, that polar carboxylic acid group and then it has a long um, hydrocarbon tail on it. Okay, and a lot of times we do, by the way, 
call these um, nonpolar tells because they're extremely long. All right, so here's another look at uh, saturated and fatty uh, fatty acids and an unsaturated fatty acid. Again, you will notice that the saturated, uh, the unsaturated fat acid has a double bond in it, and even if it just has one double bond, it will be considered an unsaturated fatty acid. Um, and then the one on top again is a saturated fatty acid. Now, how many different types of fatty acids are there? Uh, there's a whole bunch. Um, or, I should say, how many fat types of fatty acids there are? There's a whole bunch of fatty acids out there um, that are going to help to make up um, different uh, fats. And so, uh, we're going to talk about a couple of important um, sat or unsaturated fatty acids called the omega-6 and omega-3s in uh, a little bit. Alright, so, oops, jumped ahead. So, this diagram here is really important, okay? What, what we have going on here is we have our glycerol molecule that you see right here. And the glycerol molecule, there are some common characteristics of it. You need to be able to memorize what a glycerol molecule looks like and be able to draw it. But glycerol basically is a carbohydrate. Um, you will notice, or, or, or modified carbohydrate, I should say. It has um, three OH groups there um, that are characteristic of our um, alcohol. And we have three carbon chains. So glycerol is a three carbon chains with three um, alcohol groups or OH groups attached to them. And so make sure, again, you memorize what glycerol is. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take our fatty acids that we learned um, in our previous uh, slides there, and we're going to uh, combine our fatty acid with our glycerol molecule. And over here you'll see uh, that combining there is a link through an ester, or, or yeah, an ester, okay? And yeah, through an ester. And so this is known as an ester. linkage okay and you'll see the ester sitting right here and that ester uh, is basically formed through a condensation reaction just like we saw with uh, amino acids combining together through a condensation reaction to produce water or when we take uh, two monosaccharides together and they um, produce water through a hydrolysis reaction. Well, we take a glycerol molecule and we take um, a fatty acid and it undergoes a condensation reaction to produce water and it links the glycerol molecule to the fatty acid through what is known, again, as an ester linkage. So the reason why it's an ester linkage is because you have an ester group there or an ester functional group. And so since we have three OHs on the glycerol molecule, we can attach three fatty acids to our glycerol molecule. And the result of adding three or attaching three fatty acids to a glycerol molecule is we create a triglyceride. Um, you need to be familiar with that name, triglyceride. And triglyceride is essentially a fat. All right. Now, these are, this is going to be a saturated fat because all of the 
uh, fatty acids that we attach to the glycerol here are all saturated. Now we could have added a unsaturated fatty acid to this um, fat and then it would be considered an unsaturated fat. So if you have all of your fatty acids linked to your glycerol to make a triglyceride and they are all saturated therefore you have an a saturated fat whereas if one or more of the fatty acids linked to glycerol contain or is unsaturated okay is unsaturated so you have unsaturated fatty acids attached to the glycerol, then the fat is known as an unsaturated fat. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. So let me let me say that again. If all three of your fatty acids are saturated, that are linked to the glycerol molecule, then they create a saturated fat. However, if you have more one or more unsaturated fatty acids linked to the glycerol molecule then the fat is referred to as being an unsaturated fat and all it takes is one double bond in one of the fatty acids to do that um, and the other thing to make note of is that the, the fatty acids that are attached to the glycerol molecule to make a fat they do not have to be identical fatty acids. They all can be different, they all can be the same, or you have a mixture of, of three different fatty acids. All right. So in this diagram here, very similar, this shows the condensation reaction that occurs here um, with this um, adding, here's our glycerol molecule, Here's our fatty acid, and you'll notice that the fatty acid is a saturated fatty acid. There's no double bonds in it, and it's going to, right here, react to form water, H2O, through our condensation reaction, and the end result is creating, again, an ester linkage. And so we're going to add uh, two more fatty acids to our ester, um, or for, to our glycerol molecule to form ester linkages. And this will create our fat molecule or our triglyceride. And the idea of triglyceride, if you think about it, tri means three. So we have three fatty acids attached to a um, glycerol molecule. Alright, so we're going to come back and we're going to talk uh, a little bit more about trans fats in, um, in just a bit um, when we go into the um, harmful effects of, um, of lipids. Okay, um, digestion of fats um, are important for you to understand. Um, the digestion of fats, uh, basically we're going to break the ester linkages between the fatty acids and the glycerol molecule um, with hydrolysis a hydrolysis reaction and you know that a hydrolysis reaction uses water um, to break um, the ester linkages so we're just reversing our condensation reaction but we need some help with that and we're going to use an enzyme called lipase and you need to become familiar with lipase you just need to know it lipase is a enzyme that aids water in the hydrolysis of breaking down um, the ester linkages in between the fatty acid and the glycerol molecule. And this way we can start digesting fats. Now fats, remember, are nonpolar. 
they are not soluble in water. So we have to digest fats in order to uh, get fat, um, get them into the bloodstream. All right. So where does digestion of fats take place? In the small intestine, which you need to know. And again, when we digest fats, we break them down with water through hydrolysis and lipase to create our fatty acids again and our glycerol molecule. Now, the fatty acids are going to enter the bloodstream. But the, they cannot necessarily um, move by themselves, um, so they're going to be transported in the bloodstream using transport proteins. That's going to, to help them to, to move through there. Um, because fatty acids are essentially nonpolar, even though they have the carboxylic acid group on there, which is polar. Um, the digestion of fats is very slow. Very, very slow. Um, and so when you uh, consume fats in your diet, because the digestion is slow um, process, you tend to feel, um, you tend, you, your body tends to be, feel full longer um, as compared to not having um, breeding or intaking fats into your diet off there. Okay, but the important things of understanding fat digestion is, is, is these three things. One is that it takes water and lipase um, to break down um, fats through the process of hydrolysis. Three is that um, this takes place, or two, this takes place in the small intestine. And three, that when digestion of fats is complete, we have a glycerol molecule and we have three fatty acids that are free to move through the bloodstream um, with the help and aid of transport proteins. All right, so our next uh, lipid that we're going to look at are called um, more or less phospholipids, as was mentioned in the first part of this tutorial. Uh, phospholipids, um, let me write it up here. Okay. Phospholipids are um, somewhat like fats, but there are some major differences. Um, first of all, you're going to have an area that is, oops, Back to this. Okay, you're going to have an area on the phospholipid that is uh, hydro. Dang, it keeps on going back. Okay. It's going to have an area here on the phospholipid that is going to be polar, very polar. And this is known as the fiber, the hydrophobic, or sorry, the hydrophilic head. Now, the hydrophilic head, philic meaning it loves water, um, therefore it is polar, is going to be more or less um, surrounded by water molecules. And then uh, you have your glycerol molecule, just like you have in fats. Um, the glycerol molecule will be right here. And then you're going to have three fatty acids. I mean, two fatty acids, sorry. Only two fatty acids. So phospholipids I'm write this back up here. Um, are composed of one glycerol. molecule, two fatty acids, and one, what we call a phosphate group, or 
a phosphate group. And it is this phosphate group that's going to make a phospholipid have a polar head to it. Okay? And so you'll see that here's here's the phosphate group um, right here. And that phosphate group is a really important characteristic of our phospholipids. So you need to be very familiar with this uh, particular or, or type of um, phospholipids. You can see this diagram again. You have a hydrophilic head. That's where the, the glycerol and the phosphate group is to make it polar. And then you're going to have the two fatty acid tells that make it hydrophobic and nonpolar. Nonpolar. So phospholipids have a polar region and a nonpolar region. And you need to make sure that you remember remember that. Phospholipids have a polar region and a nonpolar region. And um, it only has two fatty acids it has one phosphate group and one glycerol molecule. And of course the fatty acids um, are uh, form an ester linkage. You can see the ester linkages right here. An ester linkage between the glycerol and the two fatty acids. Um, in that regards. Okay. Now where do we find phospholipids? We mainly find phospholipids in um, uh, cell, or cell membranes, okay? So in our membranes that we talked about uh, that act as a barrier between the water environment outside the cell and the water environment inside of the cell itself. And we'll take a look at that in a minute. Now the interesting thing, notice that there's a kink here in the uh, uh, fatty acid chain and that's because of the um, double bond there. So this is an unsaturated fat. And you see the key or the um, the kink there um, that's uh, making this an unsaturated uh, fatty acid. Okay, again, this is an unsaturated fatty acid. The other one, though, doesn't have a kink in it, so it's a saturated. So this one is a saturated fat, fatty acid. Okay. Okay, so here's kind of the idea of the uh, cell membrane that we we're talking about. Um, in this region over here is the uh, environment, the aqueous environment, and this could be uh, inside the cell. So inside the cell. And over here, on the other side, could be on the outside, outside of the cell. And so it is this membrane here that we see uh, that's developed between phospholipids um, that separate the inside from the outside of a cell. And the way it's aligned is, is all of the polar hydrophilic heads May make up the phosphate groups are pointed into the water environment because they're polar. Where in the interior of the membrane is our uh, more or less our fatty acid tells which are nonpolar. And so the nonpolar fatty acids align themselves in the interior of the membrane and the hydrophilic polar heads, which are made up of the phosphate groups and the glycerol molecules, are inside of the, either pointed into the water environment inside the cell or the water environment on the outside of the cell. Here's another um, look at the cell membrane. This is side over here. This is, oops. Okay, so this is outside of the cell, and down here is the inside of the cell. And so you have 
your hydrophobic core um, made of the phospholipids um, and on the you have the phosphate heads here and phosphate heads here and then the fatty acid tells are here so there's the fatty acids okay now in, embedded in this um, phospholipid um, what we call phospholipid bilayer um, is going to be inserted uh, proteins so some of them are called integral proteins um, we also have uh, carbohydrates that are attached to the proteins on the outside of the cell as well as some of them are attached to the lipids themselves so we have a modified phospholipid with a carbohydrate attached to it and that can be important so this is just the basic idea of a cell membrane again a cell membrane is composed of phospholipids with the phosphate heads that are polar uh, they are facing the water interior um, the water part of the uh, inside of the cell or the water part of the outside of the cell and we have proteins embedded in those um, as well as sugar groups on the outside of the cell okay uh, purpose again for the uh, membrane is just to selectively keep things outside of the cell so it can't get in as well as keep things inside of the cell so that it can't get out or they can move things back and forth between um, the envi outside environment and the inside environment such as hormones hormones can move in uh, to the cell if the, if the cell wants it or it can move in ions such as sodium ions or potassium ions or chloride ions or move them out so it selectively moves things throughout the membrane All right, so our last uh, lipid that we're going to look at. So, so far we've looked at fats and the structure of fats, um, which are triglycerides. And then we just looked at phospholipids, which um, is basically has two fatty acids that combine to a um, glycerol molecule. And then it has a phosphate head that's attached to the glycerol molecule too. Okay. So those are the two that we've looked at. Now the last one we're going to look at is cholesterol. Cholesterol is um, often thought of as something bad for us and something that we should avoid. Uh, the truth is, is that cholesterol is an important molecule for our body. Um, very essential. Uh, we need cholesterol in at least in a certain amount in order to make uh, steroids. Um, steroids are more or less uh, hormones that are created by um, cholesterol um, or in other words what we're going to do is we're going to take our cholesterol molecule and modify it into different steroids um, or hormones um, some of the more important ones are the sex hormones which will be discussed in another tutorial later on okay so this is the molecule cholesterol that you see here on the screen um, it's it's very interesting it has um, uh, it does have one polar group there but the majority of cholesterol is extremely non polar like all of the the other uh, lipids non polar so cholesterol will not dissolve in water which gives it some of its problems it's not the molecule itself, it's just the fact that it's not water soluble that makes cholesterol a problem in our bodies. So too much cholesterol um, is going to cause some serious health issues and impacts, which we're going to talk about later um, in our lipid tutorials. Um, do you need to know the structure of cholesterol? No, you don't need to memorize it. You can find it in your data um, booklet. Uh, the structure of cholesterol so you need to at least know where it's at and be familiar with it enough that you can point out that this is cholesterol uh, and understand that cholesterol is nonpolar and it is used to make steroids 
Um, so we modify again cholesterol to make those steroids. Okay, so this this really pretty much uh, wraps up our first tutorial on lipids. Um, we're going to have a second tutorial on lipids. That second tutorial is going to discuss some more uh, intricate ideas about lipids, such as we're going to look at um, uh, the harmful effects of lipids in our body, the consequences of having too much cholesterol. Uh, we're going to look at um, some important um, fatty acids such as omega-6s and omega-3s um, in, our, in, in our tutorial. Uh, we're going to look at trans fats and what trans fats are and so forth. Okay, so um, this is all for this tutorial, and uh, make sure that you look at the second part of the lipid tutorial uh, soon after this one. All right, so that's all.